you spoke to a potential mechanism of action of the injury. And you mentioned to me the use of a D-dimer test, which we all know what it's for, but we're going to have to explain a little bit. Could you please speak to this a little bit and give the relevant context and introduction, please? Because I think this is really groundbreaking and important. Yes, yeah, thank you. So, so, so one of the, the key things that really bothered me when I started to see vac serious vaccine injuries in my own patients is that I had no idea what the mechanism of injury was. And therefore, as their doctor, I had no idea how to treat it. Because, you know, as their family doctor, um, I, I need, they would come to me for help and I needed to help them. And I, and I was clueless. I mean, this was, this is an experiment. Um, and, and I was aware that there was literally um, what we call iatrogenic disease, a medically induced disease being produced by this vaccine. And so, so I had asked this in my open letter to Dr. Bonnie Henry, our provincial health officer, what is the mechanism, mechanism of injury and how do I treat this as these people's doctor? And of course, nobody knew. And, and the vaccine manufacturers had told us that the, the, the COVID spike protein does not go intravenous. It stays in the arm. The antibodies um, to, the, to the spike protein are produced in the arm. Um, and that's what we had been found. But the scientists now, and, and Dr. Brody has actually very clearly revealed this, that only 25% of the vaccine actually stays in the arm. And the rest of it, so these vaccines are, are, a, are a, a, a vast number of little messenger RNA strands. The Moderna vaccine has 40 trillion messenger RNA molecules per vaccine dose, 40 trillion. So, 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 so these are wrapped in a little lipid capsule. The lipid capsule is to enable them to be absorbed into the cells. So this is injected into the person's arm in their deltoid muscle of the shoulder. From there, as I mentioned, only 25% actually stays there. The rest is taken up, collected through the lymphatic system and fed into the general circulation. And so it circulates around the entire body. And, and I think every doctor knows that absorption from the, the circulation occurs in capillary networks because that's where the blood slows right down. It's going through tiny, tiny vessels so, so, so these little nanocapsules containing these trillions of, of messenger RNA um, molecules are absorbed into the lining around the capillaries, what medically we call the vascular endothelium. So, so these, little cap, these little packages are absorbed into the, the, the cells around the vessels, the, the packages open, the, the body recognizes these messenger RNA strands um, as as a gene and gets to work making COVID spike proteins. So in a virus, those COVID spike proteins form part of the viral capsule. But the problem is they're not in a virus. They're in, they're in the cells around blood vessels. So as a result, they become part of the cell wall of that cell. So normally the cells that surround your blood vessels have to be very, very smooth to enable good and, 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 and unimpeded flow of blood. But as soon as you've got all these little spike proteins that become part of the, the cell wall, it's now a rough surface. It's gonna be like a very coarse sandpaper. It's, it's now what the platelets are gonna interp interpret as a damaged vessel. It's, it's no longer smooth, it's rough. So clotting is inevitable because the platelets that come down that vessel are going to hit a rough spot and assume this must be a damaged vessel. This vessel needs to be blocked to stop the bleeding. That's how our clotting works. So, 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 so clots are, according because of this and because of the nature of this, clots are inevitable because of these um, these spike proteins in the capillary networks. So I set out to then try and prove this. It, could this theory be correct? And, and so the problem is these little clots in the capillary networks are microscopic and they are scattered. So they're not gonna show on any scan. They're just too small and too scattered. It's not like the big clots that cause strokes or heart attacks. Um, they're too small and they're too scattered. 
so how on earth can we know if the person clotted? And the only way is with a blood test called a D-dimer. So the D-dimer is a blood test that, is, that will show up a recent clot. It won't show up an old clot. It shows up a new clot. And it doesn't tell you where the clot is. It just tells you that the clotting mechanism has been activated. So I have now been uh, recruiting patients from my practice, people that have come into my office and others that have, that have heard me speak about this and have asked people to do this D-dimer within one week of their COVID shot. And so far, and this study is ongoing, these are preliminary results. So far, I've got 62% positive elevated D-dimer, which means that the blood clots are not rare. That's what the, 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 the so-called experts keep telling us. The clots are rare, the big ones are rare, but the small ones are clearly happening in the majority of people, 62%. Now, I'll tell you what the real concern with this is, is that a clotted vessel is permanently damaged. That vessel never, ever goes back to normal. So if this theory is correct, which it really looks like by these D-dimer results, and I'm told it has been done in Australia and it's been done in the UK, and they also found elevated D-dimers. Um, and they, they, they sort of discarded the information because they said there's no clinical evidence of clots. Well, the clinical the, the reason is because they're microscopic and they're scattered. And so you're not going to see clinical evidence. But, but, but in fact, all of the frequent side effects of, of the of the shot, which are headache, nausea, dizziness, fatigue, could all be signs of cerebral thrombosis on a, on a, on a capillary level. I mean, those literally, you could be having thousands and thousands of tiny, tiny little clots in your brain that won't show on a scan, but they will give you those exact symptoms. So, so the concern is I have now got six people in my medical practice that, that cannot exert themselves the way they used to be. What, what medically we call reduced effort tolerance. Six people who, who now get out of breath doing things that they could previously do without any problem. So I believe that these people blocked up thousands and thousands of capillaries in their lungs in these six people. So I believe these people now have permanently damaged lungs because they have got I mean, and that's why they get out of breath. I have one fellow that used to walk two miles to my office every week for a, a shot for his arthritis. And he says after a quarter of a mile, he's done. In other words, his effort tolerance is reduced to one eighth of what it used to be. And, and so I've sent some of these people for chest x-rays and, and CT scans to see what it shows. And all it shows is, is distorted architecture. The, the, what the radiologists re, re, record is, it, it describe as increased reticulation. It's a very nonspecific thing. And it's because it's microscopic. It, it's just, but, but, but the concern is because these vessels are now permanently damaged in a person's lungs, when the heart tries to, the heart tries to pump blood through all those damaged vessels, there's increased resistance trying to pump the blood through those lungs. So those people are going to develop something called pulmonary artery hypertension, high blood pressure in their lungs. And the concern with that is that those people will probably all develop right-sided heart failure within three years and die because they now have increased vascular resistance through their lungs and, and, and lung tissue and heart tissue and, and brain and spinal tissue and all of that does not regenerate. In other tissues, it can regenerate liver and kidneys and muscle and other, but there are some tissues that cannot. And, and, and so this is, this absolutely explains what I've seen in my patients. And that's what I'm doing to prove it. And my study is ongoing.